make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King. King Well, welcome to worship. I am here this morning at North Moscombe Methodist Church. You might just about hear the hum of the A1 in the background. It's a bit blustery today, but welcome to worship. This morning's worship is shared with you from North Moscombe Methodist Church, and it's brought to you by the members of North Moscombe who have prepared and uh, have delivered for us some of the elements of the service. Wherever you are and whether you are part of our circuit, part of the Methodist Church or a different church or even no church, welcome. And I pray that you will know God's presence by the power of his Holy Spirit with you wherever you are. We begin with the song that we often sing on Palm Sunday. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King. King splendor arise. Fling wide the gates and welcome thee into. Today it was by Simon the Zealot. What a day it was, a day I shall never forget. The voices raised in jubilation, arms outstretched in welcome, the crowds lining the streets, waving their palm branches, hurling down their cloaks, welcoming their king the son of David, the one who came in the name of the Lord. They believed that at long last the waiting was over. The Messiah finally come to set them free. We believed it too, come to that 
after all his talk of suffering and death, we dared to hope that he'd got it wrong. And for a moment, as I watched him, I wondered if he felt the same. The way he responded to the cheers, laughter playing on his lips, a smile on his face, a twinkle in his eyes. He was enjoying himself, I'm sure of that, determined to savour the moment. But then I noticed it. As we drew near to Jerusalem, a tear in the corner of his eye, so unexpected. Not a tear of joy, but of sorrow, trickling slowly down his face. Silent testimony to his pain. He wasn't fooled by it all. Not like the rest of us. He knew what they wanted. And how they would change. He knew that they would offer the cross. If he rejected their crown. But still he continued. Resolute to the end. That's the extraordinary thing. It was a day to remember, a day on which they welcomed their king, that none imagined, least of all I, that the crown would be made of thorns and the throne reached via a cross. Lord Jesus Christ, we are reminded of how you entered Jerusalem to shouts of joy and celebration. But we remember how quickly that welcome evaporated, how soon the mood of the crowd changed. Lord Jesus Christ, we know all too well that we are not so different. Our commitment to you so often short-lived, superficial, self-centred. Help us to welcome you into our lives with true gladness and to go on serving you, come what may, now and always. Amen. The reading today is taken from St. Luke, chapter 24, reading from verse 13 to 35, and it's entitled, On the Road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself uh, came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast, and one of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be crucified, to sentence to death and to be crucified. But he had hoped that he was, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on, on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it 
and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he, he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem and there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and, his, and has appeared to Simon. Then the, t then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Well, we've not had a chance to journey very far in recent times, have we? Many of our cars have sat idle in the driveways, though the lucky ones amongst us have been able to go for walks. And amidst all this, we focus today on two roads, two roads that provide a mirror image of each other. This is Palm Sunday, and today we remember, and indeed in less restricted times, we may even have acted out the journey on the road to Jerusalem that was lined with coats and palm branches. And in that no ordinary man reflection that was read by David, that journey is reflected on as one that begins in hope and expectation and actually ends in disappointment for Judas. From the eyes of Judas Iscariot, Palm Sunday represented the culmination of a political movement that he hoped would overflow the, overthrow the Roman occupation of the day. And as it said, they believed that at long last the waiting was over. The Messiah finally had come to set them free. And that disappointment in the end is that it's a crown not of gold, but of thorns for Jesus. Contrast this then with the mirror image journey of the two companions on the road to Emmaus in the main reading that Roger read for us. Luke's gospel tells us that the two were talking about the things that had happened. And when they questioned, they stood still and looked sad. They'd been filled with hope in their encounter with Jesus for the last three years, but this hope had been dashed by his death and they began their journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus disappointed. Where are you on your journey? Hannah Steele in this week's chapter of our Lent book suggests that our journeys to faith vary dramatically. Sometimes they can be as dramatic as Paul's experiences on the road to Damascus and sometimes they can be more like a process, like the road to Emmaus as they unpacked together. The varying level of drama in our journey isn't, of course, a measure of the power of God in our lives. When I'm able to watch my beloved Port Vale at the football ground, I sit alongside other season ticket holders and the two chaps that sit to my right are, are always the same two chaps. And when a goal goes in, and I know it's not very often at the moment, when a goal goes in, I stand up, I climb up on my seat, behind me is a rail that I hold on to, I take off my scarf and I wave it around my head like an absolute lunatic. And the two chaps next to me, they clap politely. But don't be mistaken in thinking for a minute that that goal that went in means more to me than it does to the two chaps on my right. We are all there through thick and thin, through good weather and bad, supporting our team. And it matters to both of us, but we react and our journey is different. The same with our journey of Christ. The important thing is that at some point in our journey, we meet with the living Lord Jesus and are transformed in whatever way God chooses by that encounter. In Judas Iscariot's journey, I wonder if his problem was he was so busy with his own agenda, his own idea of how the Messiah, that is the Christ, should come, that he cast Jesus in a role that he never came to fulfil. He missed the real Christ in front of him and he missed Jesus' mission completely. 
Contrast that with the two who are on the road to Emmaus. They have completely let go of their agenda. Their ideas of how this would end have already been dashed. And they are no doubt leaving Jerusalem on that road to Emmaus to go back to their ordinary lives. The beauty of this is that in their brokenness and their abandon, in their despair, Jesus finds them. Jesus found me as a young boy with great desires for life. As a teenager, I wanted to study law. I wanted to be rich. I'm pretty sure that driving a Jaguar was in my plan. And I often boasted that when I made it and I'd got all this fortune, then I would buy my parents a house and set them up for life in a wealthy lifestyle. On the journey that Jesus has taken me, instead into teaching and now into ministry, neither of which have provided wealth or that elusive Jaguar. And sorry, mum and dad, no house either. Well, I have no idea where my plan would have led me. But I'm certainly not disappointed where my journey with Jesus has brought me to. It's entirely possible that my own self-propelled plan may well have ended in disappointment like Judas's. Instead, my journey brings me to the greatest joy. In my journey, I get to see folk grow in their faith and encounter Jesus and God's Holy Spirit in new and exciting ways. It's not always the utmost of pleasures. There are difficult times also in ministry. And the last 12 months have been especially difficult. And at times they've been quite wounding. But it's been a privilege and it is a privilege during this time. Because there have also been some incredibly humbling times where I have seen God walking alongside folk like on the road to Emmaus and finding them. If you do not feel like you've been found by Jesus, then let me assure you that Jesus is looking for you. In fact, he is walking alongside you. But like the two on the Emmaus road, you may not yet have noticed and recognised him. Perhaps you are looking for a king riding in glory on the road to Jerusalem. Perhaps you're looking for a Damascus road-like experience that Paul received. But actually Jesus is just walking alongside you. Perhaps you are like those who looked for glory on Palm Sunday. Make no mistake, Jesus is that king. Jesus is sovereign. Jesus will one day come back in power. But he's also the stranger on the road who begins by asking you, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? Jesus begins by hearing you and listening to you. He cares for you and he wants to hear your story. Perhaps you need to find a friend then to go on a walk with them. One of those still permitted one-to-one -one walks that we're allowed to do even in these times. And I believe now you're even allowed to sit on a bench together, provided it's long enough. Know that as you do that, and as you discuss the things of faith, that Jesus is alongside you. And my prayer is that at the right time, like in Luke's gospel, he will reveal himself to you. That you will look aside and realise that all along Jesus has been journeying with you. Perhaps you are being called to walk alongside a friend and share your stories. All these things, the passage says, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, it says in verse 19. And as we continue the journey of our story during Lent, reflecting on God's story and our story, we are encouraged to share our journey and listen to the journeys of others. As we turn the corner on Palm Sunday, and begin our descent into Holy Week. Reflect upon your own faith journey and reflect upon what key moments stand out. Who has influenced and helped you? Ask yourself how you feel the story of your journey to faith affects others. How do those of others affect you? What are some of the ways you might be able to, to gently nudge in the power of the Spirit others along the way? To find faith. And if you are feeling 
disappointed with life and how it's panning out. Perhaps even disappointed with faith and maybe even disappointed with church. Don't be afraid to walk the walk of Holy Week. From the elation of Palm Sunday, the confusion of Monday Thursday, the grief of Good Friday. Bring where you find yourself to God and be honest, for God knows our hearts. Dwell where you are, reflect, meditate on it, and then look around you. Really look around you. You'll notice Jesus alongside you in your disappointment. And then notice what happens at the road to Emmaus. It ends with a feast. As always, Jesus' presence makes it a feast. I've seen many adaptations of that moment in the story of the two on the road to Emmaus. Paintings and pictures of what Jesus looks like or maybe even animations. In fact, the one that I most prefer and has been most profound for me was from The Miracle Maker, an animation where during Jesus' life and particularly at the Last Supper, when Jesus blesses and thanks God for the bread and breaks it, he holds it high in the air. And in the adaptation of the road to Emmaus in that same miracle maker, Jesus does exactly the same on that table in Emmaus. He holds the bread and breaks it high in the air. And it is through that, the institution of communion in the Last Supper and the breaking of bread together, that actually he recognises Jesus. At that point, their eyes are open for the two on the road to Emmaus, when they find Jesus, it's just as the beginning of a new journey. They actually make a complete about turn. That same hour, it says in verse 33, they turn and they go back to Jerusalem because they cannot help but tell others of how the story of Jesus has found them on their journey. Actually, at the end of this Holy Week, Jesus' body will be lifted high and broken like the bread. And then, on the cross, we will see the glory of the servant king revealed and will know him as our saviour. And though he may seem to vanish at times from our sight, we'll know him ever present because of what he achieves on the cross by his spirit. And as we continue our journey, where is your journey taking you? Who are you walking alongside? Why not stop for a moment even now? Look around you and notice Jesus alongside you. Jesus is walking with you to transform your disappointments into resurrection celebrations. That is the journey of this week. And then, like those who found Jesus on the road to Emmaus, our challenge is to tell a story. Everyone needs to hear about the one who was dead, but now is alive. Amen. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory there, not to be served, but to serve, and give your Cause
sorrow was taught Yet not my will But yours He said This is our God The servant King He calls us now To fall our prayers. We ask you to bless the nations of the world and be with all who lead us day by day. We pray for friendship between peoples of all countries and churches, that rivalry and self-interest may give way to harmony and mutual trust, and that hatred and brutality may be eclipsed by love and kindness. As we have reached a year of lockdown in the UK, and in this time of crisis and struggle for us all, help us to invite your Holy Spirit to guide our hearts and minds in order that we may hear, that we may hear your people's cry. Thank you for giving us this beautiful world and help us to understand that we are stewards of all that you provide. Guide us as we try to reverse the damage that has been done to lands and seas and help us to do all we can to keep your world clean, unspoiled and beautiful for future generations. On this Palm Sunday, we see Jesus entering the city of Jerusalem, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 500 years before, 
that the Messiah would come and proclaim peace for all nations. Jesus was a quiet pilgrim, entering the holy city surrounded by a small group of followers. May your Holy Spirit guide us as we try to travel with him on our own journey. We remember before you all those we know who are lonely, bereaved, or suffering in any way. May they feel you by their side. As we journey through Holy Week, help us to hold firmly to the joy, hope, and certainty of Easter Sunday. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude today's service in the garden at the back of North Muscombe Methodist Church in this beautiful reflective space. In a moment I'll bring our final blessing but I would like to welcome you if you're watching this on a Sunday morning to our coffee time which is on Zoom and it begins at 11.30 each Sunday morning. The details you should find on the screen. There are also a number of opportunities this week to join in with Holy Week worship. There will be a service of Tenebrae on this YouTube channel on both Thursday evening and on Friday morning. It's a service that reflectively thinks about the journey of Christ and the relative abandonment of Christ towards the cross. And of course, we will join together as a circuit with a YouTube service next Sunday morning. So I hope that you will be able to tune in for that. In the meantime, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings.